there. Before we start, take a look at this amazing landscape and tell me what you think. There are natural processes of Earth that can create wonderful landscapes like this. The Earth experiences natural processes that bring changes to it. It can either be an exogenic process or an endogenic process. And today, we will learn about these two processes. Are you guys ready? In the field of geology, endogenic processes are geological processes that occur beneath the Earth. It is composed of volcanism, tectonic, and isostatic processes that occur within the Earth's interior. The first process is called volcanism, wherein volcanoes erupt magma caused by the asthenosphere, the primary source of magma formation, and turns it into lava. A magma is a liquid rock, so when it cools down within the crust or above the crust, volcanic landforms are made and are divided into extrusive and intrusive landforms. Exciting, right? Actually, a magma that has been cooled down within the crust is called plutonic rocks and a cooled down lava above the surface is called igneous rocks. Did you know that in general, the term igneous rocks is used to refer to all rocks of volcanic origin? Now, let's talk about volcanic landforms. There are actually two types of landforms. One is extrusive and the other one is intrusive. Extrusive volcanic landforms are formed from material thrown out to the surface during volcanic activity. Furthermore, there are different types of landforms that fall under this category. First is the fissure vent. It is a narrow linear volcanic vent through which lava erupts, usually without any explosive activity. Second is the conical vent. It is a narrow cylindrical vent through which magma flows out violently. The third one is the mid-ocean regions. The central portion of the mid-ocean regions experiences frequent eruptions, the lava is basaltic and causes the spreading of the seafloor. Composite type of volcanic landforms, which are conical or central type volcanic landforms. Another one is a shield type volcanic landform. These volcanoes are mostly made up of basaltic lava and they become explosive if somehow water gets into the vent. Otherwise, they are less explosive. Have you ever seen a volcano that has an inverted cone shaped vent for a mouth? Well, it's called a crater and it looks like this. And the magma flows right out of it. For the intrusive type of volcanic landforms, we have the faulting and the folding. They take place mainly along the plate boundaries, which are the zones that are not stable. Endogenic processes cause many major landform features. However, there are different types of faults as seen on the pictures above. If the endogenic processes focus on the changes in geological processes in the Earth, the exogenic processes focus more on the changes on the surface of the Earth. Exogenic processes are geological processes that happen at or near the Earth's surface due to influence of exogenic forces. Exogenic forces like waves, rain, droughts, winds, tornadoes, snow, and drastic changes in temperature may cause exogenic processes to occur. These exogenic forces wear down the Earth's surface causing it to change or move to another place. There are three types of exogenic processes weathering, mass wasting, and erosion. These processes, as mentioned earlier, happen due to agents or exogenic forces. Weathering is an action of elements of weather and climate over the Earth's surface. It has three types, physical, chemical, and biological. Biological weathering happens when several biological activities, such as growth or movement from organisms, might affect the rock's composition. These activities may bring conditions for physical or chemical weathering. Chemical weathering happens when rocks undergo decomposition due to chemical reactions occurring between the minerals in the rocks and environment causing it to change its composition. This is caused by solution, carbonation, hydration, or oxidation or reduction. The next type of exogenic process is what we call mass wasting or mass movements. This process happens when the mass of rock debris transfers down a slope under the direct influence of gravity. Mass wasting can be classified in two types of movements, slow and rapid movements. Slow movements create creeps and solid fluxion, while rapid movements creates landslides, debris avalanche, mud flow, and earth flow. While mass wasting involves gravity to move rock debris, erosion involves geomorphic agents to move rock debris. Erosion happens when rock debris moves from their site of weathering, but is moved by geomorphic agents like running water, wind, and waves can cause erosion to happen. The main difference of mass wasting and erosion is that mass wasting happens due to gravity while erosion happens due to the environmental forces. 
at the end of the erosion process, deposition happens. Deposition is when the material or debris caused by erosion starts to settle down on the new location. And well, this is the end of the video. I hope you guys learned a thing or two. Learning with each of you is awesome. I hope when you see a landmark, you will be able to say, Wow! That is because of the endogenic and exogenic process. Until next time, bye!